Hey there, welcome to another episode of the Bonsai Stuff Podcast. In case you haven't been around for the last five and a bit years, I'm Scott Martin from Bonsai Matsu. Thank you for listening in. It's greatly appreciated as always. In this episode of the Bonsai Stuff Podcast, I'm going to focus in on a few things that I love. So I love bonsai. You should know that by now. It's um, it's in my core, um, my being, who I am. Bonsai is intrinsic between between me and and who I am. It's just part of part of me. You know, I feel like I sometimes if I stand too long on the ground somewhere, I grow, start to grow roots out my toes. The other thing I love is Australia. I love our country. I love who we are. I love our evolution. I love where we're where we're heading with things. We're not perfect. We don't have to be, but. What I want to do in this episode of the podcast is talk about bonsai in Australia and with primarily a focus on how I believe we can all together improve bonsai in Australia. It's getting much stronger, much more connected and it's so very, very positive how we all talk about bonsai now and how we, we embrace it and how we see ourselves. So I'd, I'd really, like to, um, really like to push that and dig a little bit deeper on, on that one as well. And also in connection with that too is there's um there's a there's a brilliant show called the Bonsai Open and I want to talk a little bit about that later on too in the podcast as well and how that links to this um this continual improvement within within the Australian bonsai scene and and how that's that I believe it's playing a, a really thorough solid role in uh, in that for all of us so I think uh, I think you'll enjoy this one so stick around. Australian bonsai, bonsai in Australia. Not necessarily uh, bonsai styling. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about us as as bonsai lovers, as tree lovers in Australia. Whether you're in the uh, the bonsai club scene and you're showing trees, whether it's just in your backyard, whether you're starting your bonsai journey, whether you're 400 years into it, doesn't make a difference. We're all we're all part of the same groove called uh, Australian bonsai. And it's um, it's fantastic. I can feel it, you know, in, in the connections that I make, and I come across a lot of people and um, and hear a lot of things and and see a lot of stuff. I'm very fortunate that um, that I I'm, I'm in this position with Bonzo Matsu that I um, I get uh, I get a lot of the inside word on things and and just the overall vibe. It's um it's it's really good. It's really really positive. It's great. It's something that I sat down over the uh, the recent Christmas New Year break. Had a uh, couple of cold ones one afternoon, just sitting there by myself after you know a lovely surf in the sun and feet up and shorts on and shirt off and having some tunes playing in the background and and it just it dawned on me. You know, I wasn't wasn't deliberately sitting there trying to um you know conjure up things to talk about on this podcast, but it just came to me that. You know, I, I had a few messages come through from people and well wishes and, hey, what do you think? Look what I've just got or, you know, family's bought me this and I'm going to be coming to see you for a, you know, workshop or what, whatever it is. It's just – and and there was this, this uh, snowballing effect where things just kept coming through one after the other after the other and they were all so very positive and, and so so uplifting for me and, and – and, and really, really positive that, you know, it's it's one of those things. I thought, you know, how good is Australian bonsai? You know, as a as a, a group, a cohort, as a as a bunch, as a as a you know a bunch of people that um, that love these little trees in pots. We're getting we're getting smarter, we're getting stronger, and we're getting getting more enthusiastic with how we do it, and we're becoming more positive too. That's the that's the big thing, you know. There's the, the sharing of the current sharing of information and. Um, and our use of techniques to do things now it's 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 world class you know like we're not we're not um not competing in the um in the kids pool anymore you know we're on the we're on the main stage for a lot of stuff that we do which is which is brilliant it's something that um a lot of people a long time ago have worked very hard for and i don't i don't take credit for one one ounce of it because um it's up to everybody how this um how this this party goes and I think that you know if, when you walk through a, a bonsai nursery now, and you see the focus and the direction they're taking with a lot of our native species here that are being incorporated into the bonsai world, it's um, it's it's brilliant. 
I don't think you can get much better, to be honest. You know, the focus was always on exotics, and I love exotics. I'm not. This is not to create an argument on which way we should be going because I think we we need to have both in our in our collections. But now seeing how much time and effort's being put in by so many people in the background to fuel a desire, you know, it's all that that supply demand issue. You know. If the if there's no demand there, then why the hell would they go down the path of supplying it? You know, because no one's going to buy what they're producing. So what's happening in the nurseries is commercial. I, I get that, and the the drive, the push is coming from us, the bonsai enthusiasts that want to have natives in our collection. And when we walk in and we say, "Hey, listen, do you have any Australian natives?" No, I don't. Well, I'm not buying anything. I'm going out away from you, and I'm going to go and find someone who's selling them, or I'll start them myself, or I'll you know, do whatever I have to to get them into my collection. And that's caused this this shuffle of um, of trees and species that are being focused on and and incorporating that mix now is this 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 love or this drive for Australian natives to be included in that collection, which is which is brilliant. And and that's driven by us. So, you know what? Pat on the back. And and we're in, we're aggressive with how we want to learn. You know, like it's we don't sit back and 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 sort of just wait for things to present and go, oh, that's of interest. I could, I could snatch up that. I could, I could use that in mine. It's like the messages I get and the contact I get. It's like I want to do this. How do I do it? Just tell me. Let's get onto this. Let's. I don't care if it's a five or ten year path that we have to go down, but I want to start the path. And and it's that ag- that aggressive push that that's really lifting all of Australian bonsai at an ex- exponential rate, where we're becoming better, faster, stronger, smarter, and and it's it's perfect. So. I just I just put together like a, a series of bullet points as I'm sitting on sitting on this couch, listening to some music, cold beer in hand, and thinking, you know, how how do I how does how do you Scott see Australian bonds I can improve? And I'm thumping myself on the chest as I say this because it's th- these are my thoughts, and I think that based on what I've been saying, I think we could all and we all should incorporate natives into our bonsai collection said it before, I'll say it again, they're brilliant. The way they develop, the rate at which they grow, how well suited they are to your local climate, you know, it's it's perfect. You know, would they work necessarily overseas everywhere, every different type of native? Of course not, but then not every exotic species works for us in our climates as well. You know, you see it where people try and grow in super cold environments where they don't get warmth, you know, tropical species and, you know, they, they suffer. I don't do well at all. So, you know, I think that we've got that that um, that lead of having such an amazing, diverse range of magnificent species that, you know, flower and and have beautiful bark on them and and love pot culture. That we're we're so so very very lucky that we're we're pushing boundaries now with them. And you know, that's that that I think is a massive thing for us to do to take that big step forward, like working with varieties that are indigenous to your local area will give you really positive results and you know and and allow you to take those those steps forward the other thing the next thing i think to um to improve bonds on australia and i'm not saying that this doesn't happen but we've got to be really positive with each other you know it's so easy this this tall poppy syndrome knocking down somebody that puts themselves out there in any shape or form is is you know it's it's wrong it's wrong it's really really wrong because we should be doing everything we can to to pick each other up and and build it you know you see how they do it overseas and and it's amazing sometimes you think you know they get these this I, I don't I don't mean to sound rude but there's like this god complex where they they're built up and they're idolized whereas in Australia we tend to have this this approach sometimes where we have this tall poppy where it's our way of knocking people down to a to the lowest. So someone puts their head up high and you knock them down. Someone, you know, buys a – works their bum off and, and can afford a really nice car and they buy it and the first thing we, we do is we get in there and we take the piss out of them and, and, and knock them down because it's not what all of us have got. But, you know, whereas I think what we should be doing is saying, you know, you've worked really hard, you've deserved this, that's fantastic, that is brilliant. You know, you should be – you should be – doing that and I think when uh, when it comes to Australian bonsai and I really like that 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 upsurge of positivity as that as opposed to that pointing your finger and, and pushing down because that's you know the easiest way to do it is to 
take it out of someone that puts themselves out there. But you know, I think I think we all in, in every form of, of bonsai, what we do is you know, you don't have to take it on board. You don't have to do what they say. You don't have to don't have to listen. Just turn it off. Walk away, <laughs> but don't don't make comment. You know, just just unless it's going to be positive. You know, if you can't say something nice, don't say don't say anything at all. Anyway, and another thing, we've got to accept the fact that we can't go out and legally collect. You know, thousand year old trees as well. It's just it's not it's not what we can do. You know, overseas you see them heading up mountains and backpacks on and their hiking boots and tight shorts and you see them digging out these thousand-year-old trees and wrapping them in plastic and having a smile and laughing and seeing their collection and go, wow, that's amazing, that's incredible. I, I get blown away by it. I love it. I love looking at the, the trees that they get and, you know, there's some really talented people out there that know how to do it so not every tree that comes out of the ground is going to die but we just can't. There are laws against that sort of stuff. So, you know, we just have to – lock that part away and say, well, if we can't do it, then don't focus on it. Don't, you know, and I'm guilty of this myself where I go, geez, I wish I could dig that out. Geez, I wish I could take that. And I say it to myself, I don't say it in a public forum. I don't encourage people to do it in any shape or form. And and when I say it, I feel guilty, you know, like a, you go on a hike somewhere and you're up in a mountain, you look at an amazing tree and go, God, oh, that'd be so good. Imagine that in five years' time. That'd be the best tree that we have, you know, in Australian native. But it's like... Yeah, but you can't. The thing's been there for so long. Let it live forever, you know. Like just enjoy it as it is. So, so I get torn by it, but we just have to accept the fact that we can't collect old trees from the wild. Another fact that, or another another point that I want to make when it comes to to improving bonsai within Australia is that we've got to be the best at what we do. We have to, you know, having substandard skill level of any kind and thinking it's going to be you know, the, the best is, is not acceptable, you know, to, and to take Australian bonsai to that next level, we've got to keep striving. And it doesn't mean that you need to be brilliant right now before you can have an input on Australian bonsai. It just means it's got to be part of your focus. And I talked about this with the planning process uh, in the last, last podcast, but I really think that if you aim to be the very, very best at anything bonsai, um, putting mesh in the bottom of the pots when you repot <laughs> or, um, you know, cleaning the pots when they're sitting on the bench or weeding your trees, be the very best that you can possibly be, then that's definitely going to lift the the standard of bonsai within Australia, which is really exciting. And it's, it's great. It's the small things. I've talked about it so many times. The one percenters make such a big difference when it comes to bonsai. Over time, they accumulate. You know, year on year on year, season on season. You know, it it just makes it such a big difference by by being the, or striving to be the very best at what we can, and and having and using only the very best technique. You know, studying it, working it out. How how can I do this? You know, not just doing something. How do I apply why to this tree? You, you know, I'm going to learn how to why this tree. So that burn, bend I'm going to make, which goes from here to there, is going to make it that the tree doesn't take a backward step, and I'm not going to snap the branch off and and go backwards with my design. So, I think that that's that's really positive is being uh, focusing and and striving to be the very best that you possibly can with all of your techniques and skills and standards you maintain for all of the bonsai in your collection. Right, drawn breath. Had a um, had a calm down cup of tea, but I'm, oh, I love it. I told you I love I love bonsai to my core, and anything that I can do through through you to improve your bonsai and improve bonsai within Australia and around the world. Regardless, I know that people live uh, listen to this podcast far and wide, but anything I can do with people within Australia to improve where we are as a bonsai community, it it, it makes the blood pump thick through my veins I, seriously it, it, it inspires me and drives me and that leads me to my next point you got to share the passion seriously more people in bonsai means more resources are going to be available for us so think about that for a second if you've got a i talked earlier about the supply demand when it comes to natives in in bonsai nurseries and you know if there's you know within one suburb a hundred people that are enjoying bonsai in the bonsai nursery is going to be to a certain point where it can supply the needs of those hundred people, and it'll make sure it doesn't do 
any more than what it has to because it's got to run a business, which is fair enough, <laughs> absolutely fair enough. But the more people that do it and 100 turns into 200, it means that that bonsai nursery is going to expand its offerings or if it can't expand its offerings, a new competitor will come into the marketplace with different offerings. So that's good for all of us, right? The more the more people at the supply end of, of bonsai the better it is for all of us, you know. There's there's a an amazing bonsai nursery in Victoria, Chojo, and um and big ups to to my mate up there, Jeff. He's um he's expanding and going into growing, like ground growing, and and I cannot tell you how bloody excited I am by what's going to happen with this. And I know these things they don't happen overnight, you know. Putting a putting a seed in the ground today is not going to reap results for you in two months' time. It's going to be a long process, but you know what? Everything's got to start somewhere, and seeing that that this this guy is is putting it on the line, purchasing property, going to grow trees, and and you know, help Australian bonsai that that massive quantum step forward, mate. I support hundred percent. I am behind anything in anything in the world that helps bonsai and let alone you know if it's if it's going to help us specifically in in australian bonsai brilliant and and understanding that he's local as well to me he's only you know 15 20 minutes drive from from where i live it's even better i love it i really do so sharing the passion and making sure that we're all on the same page and we're all uplifting we're all pushing in the same direction we're all improving our skill level it's it's good for all of us what's good for bonsai is, is good for all of us and it leads me to the next point that I, I scribbled down we've got a when i talked earlier about not having the ability to collect uh wild stock it's just a fact it's just the way the world turns for us and it's not bad. It's not negative. It's great. I love the fact that super old trees are staying put in Australia for a super long time and will never get ripped out of the ground and put into a pot, potentially die. Anyway, this next point that I came across in my head when I was sitting there thinking is we've got to, as a bonsai community, Australian bonsai community, we've got to change our attitude. We've got to get the chip off our shoulder. We've got to realise that we have at our core, the potential to be the very best at bonsai in the world. And I don't say that lightly. I honestly believe that with the access to to the native species that we've got that are so different and unique, that have got so much going for them, with our our drive for education, with our our passion for for learning, with our our absolute uh, stubbornness, to be the very best at what we can be and the drive to to sort of help each other and 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 share the passion then i i reckon you know we don't talk about ourselves as a young bonsai community anymore we don't talk about australian bonsai being relatively fresh because it's not you know we've we've you know, we've got generations in this now i know we haven't been doing it for a thousand years but our learning curve is so much shorter now like it's such a a, a a quicker acceleration to get from point a to point b because the world's a small place and you've got you've got so much information right at your fingertips and how we apply that information might be slightly different from what they do overseas and that's that's i'm going to talk about that next but you know we've got access to so much fantastic brilliant information people have been overseas people have studied people have bought it back and that's exactly what i've done you know i've, I've, I've built a Build a business around around sharing information about bonsai techniques that I have learnt and 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 I've, I've I've got a good grip on to to make them the very best they can be for someone else. And sure, it may not stop the evolution there. It might just be another link in the chain for someone else to do something else and learn something else and and accelerate our our learning. But you know, you think think way back when pre internet days. I'm going to show my age here, but you know, as a kid. And for most of my life, there was no internet and the information you got was pretty much out of books. And you compare that to now and how quickly we can learn and the acceleration of, of learning intent, it's, it's, it's chalk and cheese. So what may have taken someone a lifetime to learn, really a couple of years and we're, we're sort of going to be ahead 
and up to date with with current horticultural practices within the bonsai world, how we apply them and and maybe the artistic side of things and and the technical side of things that's that's different. That can take a, a, a little bit longer, but as far as having access to that knowledge and and getting up to speed, you know, it's not the it's not the school of hard knocks anymore. You don't have to go through. 30 repotting cycles to suddenly realize ah oh, that doesn't work so from now on i'm going to start doing this because this is giving me a better result and i've just changed that it's like okay what's the best technique for repotting your trees yeah there's okay there's there's 50 different options here all right whose trees do i like the most who do i connect with all right so how do they do it cool okay that's what i'm going to do that's the best techniques you know you you've sort of you've, you've shortcut your learning journey massively by by just being being able to have access to the correct information you know filtering through the rubbish of course to get to the right stuff but i think that that's a that's a really important um component to to exactly how we're we're progressing in in the bonsai world in australia and you know so getting rid of this chip on our shoulder is is one thing but the next one is you know we don't we shouldn't expect everything that's done overseas to work here and likewise i wouldn't expect that everything that we do here in australia to necessarily always work overseas you know there's you know, microclimates and and how you look across australia we're, we're massive a lot of people overseas may not realize exactly how large australia is but you know we you know we drive for days and days and days and still don't get from one side to the other so when you when you think about that with the possible variation on our weather patterns and climates and then you know within those those areas the microclimates as well like things change so rapidly you know i I cannot tell you every day over summer i looked at the the daily forecast around this beautiful country of ours and i would be absolutely blown away that you know it's summer so that generally should mean you know down south hot dry up north wet hot you know it's it's sort of that's the way generally it's always been but you look across the major capital cities and it's it's very so quickly you know in in melbourne where i'm from down in victoria we've had a, a cool wet humid nothing extremely hot at, as at yet you know we're we're over halfway through through the summer period and we've we've not we've not topped i don't think mid 30s in our with our temperature Whereas I look across the country and, you know, over in Western Australia and Perth, they're, they're cracking 40 almost every second day. We've got, you know, floods left, right and centre. We've got we've got so many different emergency issues happening around the country with with climate change and, and extreme weather events that are happening that it's it's very hard to put Australia under one blanket for how we, we care for our trees. But... If you break that back, if you if you take off the fact of timing going to be different with things, the technical side of it is still very similar for how we do things. You know, wiring a tree, it's still the same no matter where you are. And I think that's the same. I know it's the same around the world. So there's a lot that we can take from overseas, but we shouldn't expect everything that they do to work for us here. And, and we just work within what we've got here – of course there's going to be that information flowing through us whether it's on you know in the social media platforms or youtube or whatever it is absorb it take it in but then i think you've got to get back to your bonsai network have a yak and say hey did you see such and such is doing this what do you reckon do you think that'll work for us you know and and consider it test it you know don't don't jump in boots and all and go right from now on this is exactly what i'm going to be doing with with my bonsai because such and such did this and they're brilliant i love them it's like okay, well they've done it. Let's let's break it back a little bit. So what's the technical side behind it? I know the physical side behind it. What's the technical side behind it? How is that going to work for me with my bonsai and and my my environment where I am? Is it going to work, or can I just take a component of it and and sneak it into what I do and make what I do get better? Then when you get it, share the passion, pass on the information. Hey guys, gals, this is what I'm doing. This is what's working. What do you reckon? Do you, can you can you incorporate into how you look after to your bonsai? And the last thing, the last thing that I just want to reiterate is, you've, we've got to for Australian bonsai, we've got to trust the process. It will take time. It always does. But 
we are we are so far down the path now and we are so bloody good at what we do that I think that we've just got to become more positive and see ourselves for exactly what we are. You know, one of the one of the leaders in bonsai in Australia, and you, you, they might make you laugh. You might think, "Oh, that's rubbish." You know, whatever. I've only got ten trees in my backyard, but you know, you're part of the process. You're part of the the community. You're part of what we do, and you know, those ten trees that you grow, that passion that you've got, that passes on to someone else, and then that passion passes from them to another person, and it keeps growing and growing and growing. So, while you're in your little little you know, sphere of, of what you do, your your love for bonsai passes on and it might not be to you, it might be to your partner who then talks to someone else who then encourages someone else to do it and that person goes to a bonsai nursery and, and buys something from them. That's a new customer to that bonsai nursery. That bonsai nursery is then growing in what they're offering and then, you know, someone who's going to one day make the best bonsai in the world walks in there and, and buys a tree from them. That's the seedling that's going to be grown in to become this magnificent beast of a, a bonsai. So, look, I, I, I know I draw a long bow with it, but I honestly mean that, that if you just trust the process that we, if we keep following this path, if we keep where we're at now, if we get this real positivity and this this community spirit with, with bonsai in Australia, then I absolutely bloody guarantee it that we are going to be up there we're not going to be looked at as a young bonsai community in oh, australia where's that it's not it's going to be yeah geez australian bonsai that is cutting edge look at them look what they're doing now and you know this this snowball that's rolling down the hill that's gathering momentum right now for for natives in our bonsai collection just keep pushing it just keep feeding it <laughs> keep keep pushing it and and growing it and and making it something that we've all got as part of our collection do not do not turn your back on exotics because they're an amazing component to bonsai and classical bonsai is, is to my core with what I do. But should natives be part of it? Yeah, definitely, 100%. And I thoroughly believe it, hand on heart, that you know, bonsai in Australia is is the best. We're getting stronger. We're getting smarter. We're so connected. We've just got to just got to get rid of that chip on our shoulder. Just push ourselves to the to the next level and and just keep taking those steps forward and and pushing ourselves and and seeing ourselves in the light of hey, you know, we are we are the best. You know these. These visitors that come from overseas, I do love them. And I have a lot of respect for them and I love love learning from anyone. But realistically, you can possibly learn as much from someone just down the road from where you are now as what you can do from, from someone overseas. The only difference between them and us at the moment is the access to high-quality old stock, which I said we can't get, so we just have to trust the process. Just keep chipping away at it step by step year by year and and will accelerate beyond beyond the world and become number one in bonsai in, in in no time all right so thanks for coming back blowing on from where we had our chat a little bit earlier about uh where australian bonsai can improve and what my thoughts on it are my two cents I thought it um, it would be good, as I mentioned earlier in the podcast, to talk about the Bonsai Open, which is um, which is a fantastic Australian bonsai show, which is really gaining some momentum, which is uh, is groundbreaking, I suppose, from the point of view that there's some serious dollars involved in the competition, and to um, to sort of expand on on that sort of concept and and what the Bonsai Open is all about, I've got Denise Allen. One of the founding members, the the inaugural crew that helped put this um, put this amazing show together. So, Denise, thank you. Welcome to the Bonsai Stuff podcast. Thank you, Scott. Nice to be here. Yeah. All right. So let's start. Can you just explain to us what is the Bonsai Open? The Bonsai Open is it's a place to bring together lots of clubs and professional bonsai artists to really try and put on the best exhibition that we can in Australia. So to do that, we've introduced some nice prize money, mm. a total of five thousand. Wow! Trying to encourage people, and and we have a handful of people, and it's not very big at this stage, who are planning three years ahead with what they're yeah, going to well. enter. Yeah, nice. So so that planning part is is um is is significant, I think, for for the development of all bonsai for all of us. So to have um have a nice a nice carrot there of some serious prize money for a show. So can you tell me like 
um, before we get on to where the idea started, like with, with the Bondi Open, is it open to everybody? It's open to any resident in Australia, whether they belong to a bonsai club or not. Right. Okay. And so it's very broad. Right. Okay. And and so the travelling there, you guys whereabouts is it based? We're based on the central coast of New South Wales. Right. Okay. Uh, so, near Gosford. Yes. Yep, yep. So really, everywhere except for some, you know, maybe Western Australia or Tasmania, it's sort of open where people can travel there. Have a bit of a holiday and um and and go to the show and that sort of stuff as well and then and take their trees home with them. All right. So where did the idea come from? How did it start? The bonsai open. Uh, it started with our annual show, saying, ah, "What are we going to do with this? We're going to grow it. Or we're going to pare back because every every club will understand volunteers are the thing. Yeah. And we're all running on how can we make something better." with as few hands and as few dollars as possible, because that's what it comes down to. So we made the move to go bigger. And really we're looking around and going, look at all these wonderful international shows. Australia doesn't have anything like that. And it really pushes people to do their best and really ups the level of appreciation of bonsai. So that's the path we went down. I think that's the that's the key, that what's happening overseas is being replicated here in Australia with the shows. I, I, I talked in the podcast earlier about, um, you know, that we we have the potential to be the absolute pinnacle of bonsai in the world here in Australia. And I, I hand on heart honestly believe that. And the shows that they have overseas, we always, um, well, it's it's common that they're talked about as, as an overseas event as opposed to something that we do here in Australia. So that's why I love this this concept of the the bonsai open because it, it actually brings that, that, that uh, that talent that's spread right around our magnificent country to one centralised point once a year. And like you said, you might not necessarily be part of it this year, but you can aspire to do it next year or you can get a tree in training that's going to be on it for the year after or the year after that because it's, it's that continuity of forward planning for these things that that really pushes us to be the best that we possibly possibly can be. So what what's the aim for the Open? Like what what is it trying to achieve? It's trying to really push that level of bonsai in Australia, I think, yeah. um, and it's it's just a wonderful bringing together. We still have our annual show as part of that, so our club members get the opportunity to show their lovely trees within a level that's, that's suitable for them, and the bonsai open is attached to that. And it's, it's great not to have to travel out of my local area to see magnificent <laughs> <Very lucky>. trees. <laughs> yes. And so, with we, we within Australia, we have um, we have local shows, we have uh, sort of national shows, that sort of thing. So this is really on a whole nother tier because it's like the even the national shows that get put together around the the country, the the thing that we call the AABC that does their national shows. It's really based around a local club hosting that with local trees shown at those events. And it's very rare to get, if if at all, if it all happens to get trees outside that local club that show at that national show. Whereas the Bonsai Open is so unique in that it invites people from everywhere to put their best foot forward. And there's a, there's a selection criteria for the, for the show, right? They, they can't, no one can just pay an entry fee and put a tree in there. They have to be put through a selection committee where they, they choose and say, yes, it can enter or no, it can't. And when you, sorry, go on. Um, that, that's, uh, that has been true. Um, at this stage, we aren't getting massive numbers. Yep. We do have a selection committee ready, but if our numbers are such that we can cope with them, but I'm hoping that before long, We'll have so many entries coming in that we all go, you're in. That's okay, fantastic. So, we love that tree. So the show the show runs typically around about the first, second weekend in, in April on a yearly basis. It's March, April. It depends when we can get okay. the booking. Yep. Um, so so yeah, your trees, your, in, your application to have your trees submitted to be part of the Bonsai Open, I think this year it closes around 8th of March or thereabouts. Closes at the 8th of March and the show is um, April um, – April sixth and seventh. Yeah. So yep. you've generally got you've generally got about a month before whatever the show date is to get yes. your trees submitted for, for for approval process, which is um which is fantastic. Do do people just out of interest, do people put their trees up well ahead of, of being ready, or do you want them like to apply closer to the event so you get to see the current state of where that bonsai is at for the show? 
it's really up to that person if they think one tree in their collection might suddenly do what they wanted to do. Yep. They've got right up to that last day to enter. Okay. Um, oh, that's awesome. So um, the some of the prize money is best bonsai gets two grand, <laughs> second gets a thousand, and third gets five hundred dollars. Best native seven fifty, best show on seven fifty. It's that's unreal. Like one question that I had was, can the the best native also win the best bonsai? They could. So they can double up on that. They could that front yes. as well. Yeah. Okay. So there's some, and that would be a bonus. We haven't had that happen yet, but it would be nice to yeah, see yeah. a native win both. Yeah, and so the show in is the a new one this year. We've introduced that. Okay. Because it's very hard to compete. I mean, we we had you know six or seven lovely groupings of show in, but they just don't have that same wow factor as one really big tree. So we've made them their own category. Yeah, that's fantastic. That encourages everybody. So where where do you see the bonsai open going in the future? <laughs> where would I like it to go? I'm not. I can't see. Um, Again, it comes back to money. It comes back to volunteers. Yep. We are lucky to have sponsors who push us through this, and that makes a big difference. We really haven't made much money from this at all at this point in time. Last year, it cost us almost 40000 to put on, so it's big wow. in terms of energy and finance and coordination. I would love to see a bigger sponsor pick it up and run with it um, and really help us, I think, you know, bonsai in Australia is hard to even get fertiliser companies or other people yep. interested Agreed. at this point. So it's really the club funding and the couple of loyal sponsors that we have that get us over the line. What I uh, what I love because I've I'm part of this show this year, and that's not the reason for having you on the podcast. It's just you know it's it, it's separate. I, I love the open for the fact that it it does push Australian bonsai to that next level, but. From some of the um, some of the research I've been doing and looking at whereabouts it's uh, it's based, seriously, do yourself a favour. Have a look at the website. Just Google uh, or search for for the Bonsai Open, and um, have a look where it's based at the Mingara Recreational Club because there's some um, some awesome restaurants. It's right near the beach. I know that I'm staying nice on the sir. beach. I'm bringing my surfboard <laughs> with me too, so. So Excellent. it'll be, um, yeah, it'll be be a bit of fun as well. So, and and the area itself is like 1,500 square meters, which is massive for an event, as well as a huge sales area. And and from what I was reading about that, there's there's definitely going to be a heap of stuff for sale at the uh, at the event as well. So yeah, the sales area is really big. Um, Mingara have been generous; they give us all of that space for nothing. Wow. And otherwise, it would cost us, you know, thousands of dollars to put on. An absolute fortune. Yeah. No, that's, that's yeah. awesome. As I said, I love, um, I love what you guys have done. I love to be, I'm, I'm really proud to be part of it and going forward. But I think that regardless, the, the, what it, what it offers to Australian bonsai enthusiasts, like I said, whether you're part of a club or you're a professional or you're an amateur, you know, it gives you something to target and aim for in the future with your trees. And I think it's, um, you guys are to be commended for it. So, as we wrap this this part of the podcast up, you're a you're a pot maker too. So I am. I have been addicted twice: once to bonsai and once to pottery. Okay. And bonsai pots look. It's just wonderful. I love going to an event where there are a number of potters. It's yep. great to see what other people are doing. There's some really interesting stuff coming out. Yeah, I love. And I, I, love I remember my first pot, my handmade pot that I saw was a Pat Kennedy pot, and I went, "Oh my goodness, mm. this is a whole other world." And uh, yeah, it makes a big difference. A beautiful tree and a beautiful pot is quite something. Fantastic. So, um, your pots. Where can where can people find your pots? I will be selling at the Bonsai Open. It's my local nice. show. I'm very lucky. There you go. So okay. yes, I, I'll have a store there, and um, I sell in Sydney and at some of the other shows. So. Okay, fantastic. It's, it's it's a hobby, but it's something that I just love doing. Something that you're passionate about. That's nice. Yes, well, that's yes. what that's what it's all about for all of us to keep us um keep us on the straight and narrow and on the uh, on the path to um bonsai <laughs> enlightenment. Really, <laughs> to do do this stuff that we love through and through. So, thank you very much, Denise, for your time. Appreciate it, and I'll I'll see you at the bonsai open. I'll see you then. All right, that's it, folks. That was a really interesting chat with Denise. I enjoyed that. She's uh, she's lovely, nice, nice person. So um, <laughs> I love talking and being part of something that that is so positive when it comes to Australian bonsai. And if you don't believe that we are 
destined to be the absolute pinnacle of, of bonsai in the world after this, then I don't know what's going to convince you because I believe it to my core. So the bonsai open, if you're not part of it, be part of it. Even if you just get along to have a look at it, that'd be um, that'd be awesome because there's it's it's a central point. It's the first of its kind where you know a lot of people talk about these events coming together and and getting people from different clubs and different states and and private collections to one point to to show. But uh, but as far as I've seen, I don't think anyone's done it in my my bonsai lifetime anyway. So this is um, this is something we've got to get behind and support because it's so good. And, and I can't believe they got five grand worth of prize money to to kick around as well so something to um to bolster the uh the back pocket with if you um if your trees get to a certain point which we all should be aiming for you know i think australian bonsai we've um we've got things to do but we are we are we're pretty good and i believe that <laughs> anyway thanks for thanks for tuning in thanks for sticking around thank you to the subscribers i dearly love you all you know that i um I really love that this uh, this podcast gained momentum. Hopefully you've seen the new latest addition to the YouTube channel as well. <laughs> I finally pulled my finger out and got a video up there and the feedback from it's really positive. So there's definitely more to come in that space. It just takes a while for me to work on and put together, but I am I am dedicated. I am committed to it now. So um, thank you. Uh, thank you for giving me your time, the most valuable asset that you've got. Hopefully you're inspired now to get out there and Get your scissors and start snipping on a few of your trees. Stay, um, stay up to date with all the work on them. It's uh, it's a warm summer. There can be hot days in between, so just um, just keep an eye on it as, as you know as always, and and give them a, give them a nice big cuddle for me. And until next time, happy bonsai.